All right, welcome to Stripes Talking Points. Here is a news story that popped up last night, and it's actually mov moving into more of the NBC mainstream news here today. Portland comedian Mohanad Alinsky says he was accosted by Border Patrol agents at Spokane bus station. Now, um, a comedian traveling home to Oregon from a gig was detained by immigration agents. I have, and his quote is, I have never felt as terrible as I did today, said a Twitter post after the incident by the 27-year-old who was in the country legally. Oh my God, what happened? Um, so basically, let's see here. A 27-year-old comedian traveling home from Oregon after a performance in Washington State was ordered off a Greyhound bus by immigration agents and detained, even though he was in the country legally. I've never felt so terrible. The episode also raised larger questions about what documents legal immigrants are expected to carry with them to prove their status. Now, um, here they're calling him legal immigrant. However, after reading through a lot of this, it does seem he is a asylum seeker. Um, he came to the U.S., on visa for exchange students in 2014. Later that year, as the Civil War gripped his hometown of Benghazi, Libya, and threatened him personally, he applied for asylum, he said. So he's an asylum seeker slash student visa slash work person here. He's got a little bit of everything. Um, so he was returning home to Portland from a performance in Pullman, Washington on Sunday. He transferred to a Greyhound in Spokane, where two U.S. two officers of the U.S. Customs and Border Patrol boarded the bus and asked if he was an American citizen. Now, in some parts of this, you see it as ICE. Some parts you see as Customs and Border Control. I do believe now the his quote is wrong, and this NBC quote coming out uh, a day or so later is also using Customs and Border Protection instead of Immigration. Uh, when they questioned him, he said, I am a citizen of Libya. They said, okay, come with us. After removing him from the bus, officers asked for identification. He told them he had a driver's license from Oregon and a valid work authorization card and document issued by the Immigration Services for uh, refugees and other immigrants to show to employers. Uh, basically, they said that wasn't enough. Illegals get these all the time. Uh, which is generally something you hear a lot about fake papers in the U.S. So what all happened to this guy to make it one of the worst events in his life? Um, the officers made a phone call and provided details from the authorization card. Afterwards, one of them said there was no record of his asylum claim. I said, what about the work permit? Is it valid or not? And he wouldn't answer. Uh, so he threatened to call his lawyer, and one of the officers told him to remove his hands from his pockets. They are worried about him being armed, which is going on. Eventually, the officers returned his ID and work authorization. He added and told him to have his purpose, papers with him next time, which means nothing because what they did said was fake. Through the um, all this, let's see, it just keeps going on. What if his suitcase gets stolen? They're referring to different types of papers for him to have and how he should carry the packet. Either way, it's a risk. We tell people to carry them, though, because the risk of being detained is worse. So if you're a asylum seeker, if you're on a work visa, um, yeah, you do have to carry paperwork with you, and you have to be prepared because you can be stopped by immigration, by Border Patrol. Uh, as a non-citizen, you need to be ready for you to be checked out. I mean, that's just part of it. As our immigration laws tighten, more and more stuff will need to be with you. Uh, Ann Chandler, an executive director of, I can't pronounce that, Tahiri Justice Center in Houston said clients have became naturalized citizens but remain terrified of not having appropriate documents with them at all times because they're stopped by immigration authorities. Naturalized citizens in the U.S. <clears throat> do not have to carry a legal file with them. Once you are a naturalized citizen, you are a citizen of the U.S. and you could prove that. Uh, 
I know so many naturalized citizens that are carrying old immigration paperwork and passports in their gloves, he said. Once people finish, they shouldn't have, shouldn't they have... All right, so this is basically saying that even once they're naturalized, they're afraid they will be picked up by immigration. Um, yeah, this can happen. However, once they're naturalized, it's not deportation. Uh, here we go. Another story. This is the one I originally found first. Uh, Oregon, question by Border Patrol. A uh, spokesman said that he was interrogated for 20 minutes by agents who contended his papers were fake and that he was in the country illegally. Uh, granted asylum, lived here for five years. Uh, eventually, the agents released him and told him to carry the proper paperwork. The Spokane City Council in October voted to restrict such searches, but Mayor David Corden has refused to enforce the new law. Um, that would be an ordinance. Um that he's refused to enforce. Here's another story. News 21, Spokane. So, 20 minutes is, as he says, I've never felt so terrible as I did today. So, in less than six years, Port Patrol made nearly 200 arrests in Spokane Intermodal Center. They've caught criminals. They've caught uh, people in possession of social security cards. Um... So yeah, it looks like these things are actually catching people, and if 20 minutes of interrogation is the worst time in his entire life, uh, that's great. Uh, ALC weighed in on this, and of course she says destroy ICE because she doesn't understand anything about how countries work. This morning, ICE on the Greyhound threatened Spokane, Portland. A few minutes, this was a 20-minute interrogation where he said he was illegal. Illegal aliens and illegal status are a legal term, and you would expect members of law enforcement to use that. Um, and in his, if you read more of the stories, they are saying there are certain pieces of paperwork he should carry with him all the time, even though there is a possibility of them being stolen. Um, goes through, here's pictures of the immigration officers. Here are the photo of the racist trash Fox News calls heroes. These are immigration officers doing their job, catching criminals, forcing people out of the country illegally, and Mohanad is uh, very much against uh, any type of control in the country, keeping people in or out, and securing the U.S. Here is the country he left, Libya. He is he was here on a student visa in 14, and didn't go back home after uh, airport bombings, murders. And here we go, 140 migrants taken into Libya. Um, some 200 people drowned in January and 4,520 Europe by sea despite great danger. So people are fleeing Libya by the thousands and dying to get out of the country. Claim journalists killed. Oh, this is Al Jazeera, just, Al Jazeera, just focused on Libya. Scores of migrants unaccounted for after boat collapses off Libya. Dying, clashes between rival groups killed people at least two people in Libya. Uh, peace talks in Benghazi. ISIL claims deadly attack on Libyan foreign ministry. Look at that nice building on fire. Warning on Libya prison wall. People were sold here. So slave markets. Uh, UN report. Majority of female migrants face gang rape. Uh, this sounds worse than a 20 minute um Interrogation. Uh, rescue ships stopped. Benghazi airport closed after heavy rains and floods. 14 dead on refugee boat. Tear gas, rubber bullets to force migrants off ship. Uh, barricaded refugees ready to die, then return to Libya. So Libya is a very bad place, and this... Mohanad is really upset that he was referred to as uh, illegally in the country and his papers might be fake and for 20 whole minutes he was questioned. I'm pretty sure most of the people here would be very much willing to come here and face such an interrogation on visa. They're dying to get to Europe. Libya is a very bad place. Ten-year challenge.
look at this. Libya, 10 years ago, there. This is after the U.S. and Europe overthrew Mahar Gandhi. This is the Arab Spring that they're referring to as the imperialist invasion. No matter what happens in these countries, it is always, always the fault of the West. There is no other option. If the people of Libya escape the country and come to the U.S., and face a very, very, what appears to be non-issue traffic violation where they got on the bus to check his passport. He said, no, I'm a citizen of Libya. Took 20 minutes to go through and find out that he was here legally and he was released and they told him to carry the proper paperwork next time versus this, versus death, murder, gang rape, slavery, terrorist attacks, drowning. Yeah, that's just my thoughts on this, how this story is mostly a non-issue, but shows the difference that the U.S. has as far as how uh, people are treated, even in what we would consider a harsh case, versus how situations are all around the world. You live in the West. We are much safer even our most horrific news stories about the mistreatment of people do not come anywhere near anything else. And if you are a member of ICE or Border Patrol, I say thank you for your service. Please make the calls and do verifications sooner so that people can get on with their lives. However, that is all. Thank you. Put your thoughts below, please. Like and share the video, and you have a great day.